So we are ready to, to start uh, uh, our lecture series uh, funded by the BBVA Foundation. And this year, the, uh, the lecture series is co-organized by the European Society of Historical Demography and uh, by the ERC Advanced Project ECHO. And uh, we have the pleasure to have, uh, as an opening lecture, Hector Perez Brignoli. Uh, he is a professor emeritus at the University of Costa Rica. He has been fellow at the Wilson Center, the uh, Guggenheim Foundation, the WICO in Berlin, and the Institute of Advanced Studies in, at the Universitat Constance. Among his publications, The Population of Costa Rica, 1750-2000, uh, uh, Experimental History, uh, published in 2010, Historical Atlas of Central America, published in 2003, uh, Brief History of uh, Central America, published in, in several editions uh, in, in Spanish, Infant and Child Mortality in the Past, edited by Alain Bidot, uh, Bertrand del Jardin, and Hector uh, Prebrignoli, and the International Studies in Demography, Oxford, published in 1997. He has been an advisor and researcher uh, of the project on, of the economic history of Latin America, the advisor of the Inter-American Development Bank, St. Anthony's College, Oxford University between 1996-97, a member of the Historical Demography Committee at USSP between 1986 to 1996. And he's coming to talk about uh, a new book, another one, that is the, uh, the demographic transition in Latin America, just uh, published uh, this year. And uh, uh, as usual, we have between half an hour to 45 minutes uh, talk, and then we open the floor for questions. Thank you very much for coming to, to Madrid okay. and to CESIC to give this lecture, and the floor is yours. OK, thank you very much, uh, Diego. It is a, a pleasure to be here and to have the opportunity to talk uh, with uh, you, so many friends, and, uh, um, and I, I, I will talk about my, this book. Uh, of course, at the beginning, I, I, I should apologize because my, my English is not really very good, but I uh, guess it would be enough for the communication. The uh, book, um, has been published this year, and is um, a kind of um, book at the end of my career as a historian and a, a, a demographer in, 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 in the Latin American uh, field. So the, the approach I, I take is, is, is a large one. Uh, started in 1800 and uh, with projections until 200 and 2100 using of course the, the, the projections. And I, I would like to talk, there are of course many, many subjects in the book, but I, I would like to underline the, which were the, the main characteristics of demographic transition and I will, as a historian, I have always been I, I will characterize demographic transition as a historical process of global change. And I will try to show this for the case of uh, Latin America. My, my book, my new book, was published in Argentina in Teseo and is available for, uh, 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 through Amazon uh, for printed copies, but it is free for download. Um, and I have been uh, 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 distributing the, the, the link uh, in, in different, uh, with different, uh, in different places. I will just uh, show you that we have seven chapters in the book. The first one is about uh, demographic transition, the, the basic uh, ideas about it. And of course, I played all the time with the idea of demographic transition in Europe and just the process we know in detail is the, the European process of demographic transition and of course the Latin American case. The second chapter is about the strategic space of population growth during this uh, process. Chapter three 
is about the age e e structure and uh, of population and the changing from, of course, a young population to an aging population. Chapter four is about the mortality decline and the conquest of health. Chapter five, about fertility decline and the so-called second demographic transition. Chapter six is about migrations, diasporas and demographic transition. Of course, uh, normally in the concept of demographic transition, uh, as you know, migrations are not included. But in this book, which is a book about the population of Latin America, uh, migration is, is, is an essential component. So I, I, I'll try to show the connections between the demographic uh, transition and all the migration process, which is, is, is a connection uh, sometimes very, very difficult to, 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 we know is there, the connection, but it is difficult to modelize. And chapter seven is about the aging, the aging process and its consequences. And after, uh, at the end, of course, th there, are, uh, there is an epilogue uh, called Demographic Transition as a Historical Process of Global Change. As an annex, I include a, a short note about the COVID-19 pandemic. And this is because uh, the, the book was already done when the, the pandemic comes. So uh, I decided to include just a short note with the last uh, data at the very end, at, at the very end because uh, from a historical point, point of view, it is too early to uh, have more, more conclusions or details about the pandemic. Now, let's go to, we can go f uh, very fast through the concept of demographic transition. Of course, we know that uh, Adolf Landry uh, co uh, 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 spoke about uh, demographic revolution in 1936. And after the, the Second World War, Notenstein and Kingsley Davis, 1945, 46, they uh, developed the, the, the idea of demographic transition. And of course, it was Ansi Cole which, uh, particularly between 1959 and 1966, developed a very, very different uh, research project about the process of demographic transition, particularly the fertility decline in Europe that has, has been really milestones in, 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 the, in the field. Now, uh, you are all familiar with this scheme what is demographic transition? Well, decline uh, in, in uh, natality, in uh, uh, the birth, and decline in the death, in mortality, mm -hmm. and a, a, a short period, short or long period of very fast uh, population growth, and after that, stabilization again. We, we know all, all, all this. So, if you look careful at the concept of demographic transition, we discover three different dimensions. One is a description of long-term structural changes that were mainly experienced in Europe between, we can say, 1750 and 1950. But at the same time, there is another idea, the idea of uh, global convergence. The idea uh, that, that this process that was first experienced in, in, in England and then in the continent and in the US, that it is a process that will be experienced all over the world. Uh, and third, the idea of a causal model of uh, demographic transition as a kind of endogenous changes that explain, will explain the whole process. So interactions between mortality, fertility, population growth, and uh, all, all other variables. Now, 
Demographic transition is a, a, a process of rapid population growth, but with an important difference if we look at Europe and Latin America. In Europe, the annual rates were all the time below 2%. In Latin America, the annual rates of growth were between 2% and 3.5%. So Latin America experienced a very fast growth and, 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 and very high growth than Europe. And of course, the main aspects were the mortality decline, the end of major epidemics, the decline of infant mortality, the rising in life expectancy. Second, industrialization, urbanization, revolution in the transports and communication, very important expansion of literacy, and the modernization of the state and the society. And of course, at the same time, all the aspects were improving nutrition, uh, public health, and uh, practical hygiene uh, developments, and late advances in medicine. And of course, uh, migration uh, to, the, to the cities from uh, the development of glue, uh, uh, nuclear families and a gradual, a gradual decline in fertility to finish with the contraceptive pill in the 1960s. Okay, now, mm -hmm. right. so if you look as a whole, this process of demographic transition was not a direct consequence of industrialization. Be because if, even if you look at Europe, uh, a demographic transition is going on and uh, not all the countries are really uh, with the same path of industrialization. England and uh, of course France and, and, and Germany are very much uh, uh, industrialized than other countries that, are, that are, are at the same time experiencing the demographic uh, transition. So, it seems that demographic transition was a global, cumulative and interactive effect of, of many different forces operating since the beginning of modernization. Oh, okay. Oh. Oh. Ah, está. Now, let's go to Latin America. This is a typical example of demographic transition, Chile. We have um, rates since the 1850s to 2000 in, in this uh, graph. And if we look at the birth, uh, we have a very high uh, birth rates between 40,000 to 50,000 uh, per thousand, uh, 40 per thousand uh, since the 1850s to the 1920s. In the 1920s, uh, mm, the birth rate start to decrease slowly, and we have a very sharp decreasing here. We have here a very sharp decline of the birth rate rates in the 1960s. Here. From 40 per thousand to around 20 per thousand in the 1980s. And if we look at the mortality, Mortality is uh, between 30 and 40 per thousand since the 1850s to the 1920s. In the 1920s, mortality decline, uh, the starting of decline is first than, than the birth rates here, and there is a sharp decline here until the 1950s. And of course, this is related to the development of public health and many uh, uh, 
different uh, process. Now, if we look at the natural growth rate, is around 1% here. It's, 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 it's a, a, a little bit uh, over 1%, and then it's a sharp, very important increase until a maximum in the 1960s here. Okay, okay. This is the typical, a typical example, we will say, of uh, a demographic transition in Latin America. Now, it, uh, we can use the cold di diagrams that Massimo Livivacci called, has called the strategic space of demographic transition. And uh, I will show you two, two examples. One is the Costa Rican. Uh, we have uh, here the data starting 1750, and we we have here this this space is 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 like a, 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 a circle, if you like here uh, around this space. But but if you look at the isoquantas. This circle is around the isoquanta of 2%. And then things change after 1947. Of course, life expect expectancy is increasing. We have here the uh, 60 years of la life expectancy. And, and here in, in, in purple is the two point one um, total fertility rate. So here, 1947, 1952, we have a maximum infertility in 1972, and then a sharp decline in fertility. And of course, at the same time, the increasing of life expectancy fro uh, from 60 years to 80 years in 2000, 2002. And you know, here is uh, 2047 with the projections. So the space of change is really in the 50 um, years, uh, first 50 years of the 21st century, is just this one. It's a very, very, very small space. If we look now at Guatemala, this is an example of what we can call late demographic transition, because Chile and Costa Rica are just the typical examples uh, in, with the levels and the past uh, of Latin America. Now, in Guatemala, it's, it's a late case. We have the same more or less situation. Uh, here, the data uh, in Guatemala start at the end of the 19th century. And we have here, here, 1982. In Costa Rica, that was 1947. So it's like 40 years of uh, delay. And then we have a similar path, but, but the data are coming until here, because all this is based in projection. By 1947, we, with uh, 20,047, 20, 20, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> we will be more or less here. So this at the same position than in Costa Rica. We have in, in Latin America two, two other, other things of uh, early demographic transition, which, are, uh, which uh, I will not be analyzing here, uh, which were Argentina, Cuba, and Uruguay, with a very early uh, fertility decline and mortality decline in the 1920s. OK, let's go. Now for the comparison between Europe and Latin America, using the cold diagrams, 
this is coming the, the, the European pattern. This is coming from the coal and associated study, the Princeton project. And of course, they started here in 18, the 1870s. If we look at the isoquantas, we are between zero and one percent. In Latin America, the starting point we were two percent. We were here. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then demographic transition is going on, but it's always below the isoquanta of two percent. Now the 1930s and of course, 1980s here is more or less the end of the process. If we look now at Latin America, we, for, for the mortality, the, the process is very much the same. So continuous increase in, in life expectancy, but, but the fertility process is quite different with a uh, uh, ceiling here in the 1960s with a total fer fertility rate that is close to seven. In Europe, the maximum infertility rate was here and was five. Okay, and after that, the process of decline is, is uh, fast with no Uh, problems in, in, in Latin America for uh, until the convergence here after 2000. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about the second demographic transition. As you know, this is a concept that was developed by Ron Stege and Van de Ka in 1986. And their idea is that this is a, a global uh, trend that is present in the 21st century. And of course, it's as associated to very low fertility rate, very high life expectancy, and they are looking at the changes in family organization. Uh, and the um, main point in, in Ron Lestegui's um, argument is that all that is related to, to an important change or at the level of the values and the culture. And we can summarize the, saying that the, the trend is the um, uh, very important uh, development of um, hedonistic individualism as a new values that uh, are more or less present in all the young generations. And of course, there are all other uh, things related to this uh, process. A large diversity in family organization, a challenge to patriarchalism related to the women empow empowerment. And of course, women empowerment is very much related to the development of the um, contraceptive pill which uh, will give the women real independence and will permit the separation between sexuality and procreation. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, of course, within this global pic picture, there are many regional and national particularities still present. A, a debate is, is there in Latin America a similar process or not? Some people think yes, and other, other demographers think no, not. Uh, this is still a, a question of uh, debate. Um, one argument, Maria Eugenia Zavala, a very good friend from, from from Mexico, she says that uh, she, 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 uh, that, that uh, the second demographic transition is a sociolo sociological concept 
that uh, is very different from the basic concept of uh, a demographic uh, transition. That, that, that is, is true, is, is, is truth is a sociological argument, but I will say that if we look at the demographic transition concept, this is also a, a, a social, is based in a sociological approach, which, is, which was based in the idea of modernization. And modernization was, uh, the definition was developed by the sociologists like Parsons. The famous pattern via variables of Parsons were developed uh, just a little bit after Kingsley Davis' ideas uh, at the end of the 1940s. So modernization and changing values or, uh, for the second uh, are, for me, are sociological arguments. And I will say that if we are dealing with uh, just important behavior changes in society, the explanation should be, uh, in spite of all the demographic uh, analysis we can make, the, the, the final explanation will be sociological and psycho, uh, psychological explanation, particularly in the case of fertility, because we can say that uh, at the level of mortality, uh, all the pressures coming from the so uh, society, from the public health measure, etc., are more or less, we can say, well, all, all people will be following these um, pressures. But at the level of the fertility control, the family planning, the dec decisions are very personal decisions at the very end. Okay, this is, is a subject of debate. Now, if, if we try to make a basic scheme for explanation of uh, the process of demographic transition, we can say that perhaps there is a, a combination of different levels, as I already say. <coughs> On one hand, we have material goods, changes in material goods related to industrialization, urbanization, the offer in the market, the, etc. Changes at the level of institutions, modern bureaucracy, national health systems, civil society organizations, modern states, etc. Ideas, literacy, secularization, a new conception, new, new, new views, uh, new vision of, of, of the world. And finally, changes at the level of persons, values, attitudes, practices. And in my view, the basic scheme of uh, demographic transition is a permanent interaction between all these different levels. And of course, this is based in the European experience, but in, in, if we look at the Latin American case, we have a continuous process of transfer, technological transfers, and adaptations. Because finally, if we look at the changes in mortality, that all, all the changes at, at, uh, at the level of the public health are coming, were coming from Europe. All the changes, with no doubt. And all the changes at the level of the family planning were coming from the developed world, no doubt. And of course, in, in the fertility tra uh, transition in Latin America, we don't have, with the <coughs> excuse me, exception of um, Argentina, Uruguay, and Cuba, where the influence of migrants uh, from Europe was very important, the practices par particularly. But beyond these countries, in all the other countries, the 
big decline in fertility was just a result of the contraceptive pill and the practice of uh, family planning through sterilization and other practices. And all that was developed. I, 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 I analyze all, the, all this in, in my book was developed through many different programs of support coming from the US government, the World Bank, and other institutions. <coughs> and I will say that even in Latin America, where anti-imperialism against the US is, is a common political practice since many, many years, However, in this field, no problem. I mean, th there were some resistance against family planning, but most of the people adopted these new ways of behavior very, very fast. And the Catholic Church, another important, you know, you know the Catholic Church is against uh, family planning. But if we look careful at the story, in the 1960s, when this process was really uh, in, in, uh, starting, <coughs> excuse me, Catholic Church was not in favor, but was not against. I, I, uh, we should remember that in the 1960s, uh, uh, during the Council, the Vatican Council, with all, all these changes in, in, in the Church, you know, the main preoccupation was uh, the theology of liberation, was not family planning. In uh, the Pope, Paul VI, uh, um, organized a, a, spe a specific commission to analyze the problem in the 1960s. And the recommendation of the commission to the pope by majority in, in the vote was that the pill was not against the theological or whatever we, we can call the principles. That that, that was not a, a, a incompatibilities, we can say. The recommendation of the commission was that, was in favor, but the Pope adopted a more traditional view, and uh, after that, in, 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 in the 1970s and 1980s, the church was very much against the family planning. But we should uh, wait to, to Jean Paul uh, VI, uh, Jean Paul II, uh, as a pope, uh, to have at the level of the church um, really uh, policy against, uh, very much against family planning in Latin America. So, if you like, it was too late. So, it was a, we can say, a smooth process of technological and ideological transfer in the, in the story of the fertility decline. Now, I, I will just uh, finish this. If we look to the whole process of population growth in Latin America since 1800 to the end of this century, the total population is here, will, will be a maximum by 2060, and after that it will be a decline. And of course, these are projections, but I will say that all these figures here will happen, because we are just here. The, so it's this curve here is quite probably. 
and the growth annual population growth is here. There were a maximum in the 1950s and the growth would be zero here by 2060. And if we look at the median age of population until the 1990s, the median age of population was less than 20 years. So it was a very, very young population until the 1990s. And now, look at this. This is really impressive. By 1950 and 1950, the projection by 1950 is the probability to, to be at 40 uh, years as, uh, of median age is, is very, very high. So it's a very fast process of aging. And now, of course, we, we can discuss about uh, the, which were the consequences of the population growth, uh, all the problems of the climate change, at the use and abuse of limited resources, etc. But you are more or less familiar with, with that. If we look now at the process of aging, we have a real big, big important questions. The internet, uh, the, there are many studies now about the intergenerational transfers that are, 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 are in play now with, with, uh, within this process. And of course, the big question is which is the future of the welfare state? Um, some people say that we, we, will fair state will disappear. I will not say perhaps not disappear, but it will, it, it will be many, many very important changes. There are many changes in the pattern of family relations. And we are facing for the first time uh, probably the problem of the future decline of population. And the question is here, and I will finish with, the, with this question, is will the human race survive? Because, of course, uh, I, I will not be reasoning here with the climate change and all, all this, because this is, this is there and I am not prepared to, to include this uh, variable. But if, if we think just as demographers, I would like to remind that in the 1980s, Bourgeois Pichat, which uh, uh, he published the last two, two, two papers, and he was a very smart and extraordinary uh, demographer. And the intervention of Bourgeois, Bourgeois Pichat in this paper was uh, if what will more or less it was more or less like, like this what will happen to the human race if the uh, rates of mortality and fertility experienced by Germany now that he was observing will extend, extend all over the world. Because if there are a conversions because of demographic transition, that would be the future. I mean, it's just a very simple projection. And he made different calculations. And his conclusion was by 2400, the human race will disappear. Now, I think this is a question we have to work with. 
uh, I, I will confess when, when, when I, I, I arrive in this book to the last chapter, the aging process and its consequences, that we, for, for Latin America is, 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 is a question just for the 21st century because as has been showing until the 1990s, the population was still very young in most of Latin America. But when, when you look with this, with this data, uh, many, many things in the horizon are, I will not say dark, but not so clear. Mm, the future is not so um, bright. And, um, well, I, I, I will confess that um, I will finish the book with, uh, because I, it was the pandemia when I was finishing the book. <laughs> so it, it, is, it was not, not, not a, a particularly happy, happy environment.